Now we need to discuss how to actually create AdWords ads, how we write those little text ads. Now, you should have already by now studied some of the copywriting module in this course, which I went over early on. And that gives you a basic understanding of some things you need to know about to write basic copywriting for the web, uh, for offers, for opt-ins, for leads, for stuff that you sell. What, whatever you're gonna do with your marketing online, you need to know how to write good copy. You need to have good copy in not only your ads and your landing pages, and of course your sales offers and pages, or sales videos, or webinar scripts, however you're gonna sell things, but also even in your emails and how you communicate with people, as well as on your blog, if you have a blog and you make blog blog posts, you do content marketing, which you should when we cover uh, that part of the course later on, when we get to SEO stuff and content marketing. Well, all of it re revolves around good copy. And so hopefully you studied that module a bit and you understand the basics of how to write good copy. We talked about how to express benefits and not features so much, but also the benefit within the benefits. So if you're obviously, let's say, selling a solution that helps people lose weight, the benefit of the product isn't necessarily being skinnier or being 30 pounds less, it's the benefit within that. Having more confidence, being able to wear a bikini to the beach, you know, obviously if you're a woman, unless you're a man and prefer that, that's okay, that's your business. Uh, but anyways, so it's getting across the benefit. So when we go to create these AdWords ads, we're dealing with a few things. The first thing is obviously we have very a very limited amount of space to communicate, to get the click. and we need to first and foremost figure out what the keyword intent is what the heck is someone thinking when they type in that keyword there's an old phrase in marketing if you step on the other side of the counter so imagine yourself being a customer being on the other side of a counter uh, and you interacting with a business or looking at a business's marketing you know, as you can probably imagine, you hear the phrase, uh, too close to the forest to see the trees. Well, that's how we all get when we kind of work on our businesses. Sometimes we don't realize the obvious that maybe prospects or customers realize. And that's, by the way, also why surveying is very powerful to ask people for, you know, their opinions and feedback on things in our business. You know, what they want to buy next or, or what their experience is, uh, you know, with any of our sites or process or anything else. And oftentimes we'll learn great information that we didn't realize ourselves. Well, when it comes to AdWords ads, we really need to step on the other side of the counter. Try to figure out people that are searching for whatever, you know, how to build a garden, you know, how to get into hydroponic gardening, looking for, you know, how to set up help desk software, whatever the keyword phrase is that's being searched. What is the searcher thinking? If you were that person, what do you think they're looking for? Or what, or what do you think will get their interest uh, when they, you know, kind of type that into Google. So that's first and foremost where you kind of start. But let's talk about some things first. Let's talk about ads, AdWords ad limits. Basically, we have this little ad and what, you know, it has a limited size uh, and so on and so forth. So the first thing is it has a headline and it's up to 25 characters, not very much. That's becomes the blue clickable text. Under that, we have description line number one. It can be up to 35 characters. Uh, and by the way, I just remembered, I didn't put it in this slide. It's kind of an old trick, but at the end of description line one, you should put a period. So don't just carry over like an ongoing sentence on the line two. If you do that, it'll format your ad weird and sometimes can stick the words together uh, and it doesn't look good. So that's an old trick most people know of. You may, may know of that. If you don't, whatever the description line one is, try to end it with a period. So you kind of start a new kind of sentence or, or at least a, a fra phrase, a segment for the next line. But the next line is another 35 characters. And then ultimately you have your display URL, which is up to 35 characters. You know, it's like www.yourdomainname.com slash whatever. Now Google allows you to make that display URL, whatever you want. And in an upcoming lesson here soon, I'm going to talk about some tricks behind how to use that to increase click rates and some things that you can do. So if you're sending traffic to your homepage, which of course you never should, it should always go to a landing page. But let's say the landing page has some kind of weird long name and it's not all that great, but it's for your own just kind of tracking purposes. Well, you don't have to show that destination URL where the click is going to actually go to in the ad. Uh, Google allows you to set the display URL to whatever you want, which is pretty cool. So we can use that extra space to make it rdomain.com slash, and then use some other things there, which may help us get clicks. We can put the keyword there and we can do some other neat things with that. So we're gonna talk about that in a lesson here coming up. Now, here's an example ad. 
Now, what you'll notice, and what's interesting is literally right now this week as I'm preparing these lessons for you, so depending on when, whenever in the future you may come and watch this video, Google's in the middle of rolling out a bunch of new changes to AdWords and the, these text ads for search and their sizes. So it used to be very small, 25 character clickable headline, and then the green URL line, and then description line one and two, and then, uh, well, the display URL is the green line. So you had this, the headline, and then those two uh, description lines. Well, as you're starting to see, I just literally grabbed this off the web real quick right now. You're starting to see different ads already. They're in the process of testing some new formats and some more expanded ads. They're finding, which is obvious, you know, the bigger the headline is with more clickable words, the greater the click-through rate. And I've already talked about the science behind that and the reason behind that. The higher the effective CPM calculation and formula, the average rates they get for each page that loads of Google results, they make more money. And that's their goal. So they're trying to increase click-through rates on these ads because, you know, it's a, it's a CPC marketplace. Well, one of the things they're doing, and I'll tell you on the next slide here are some changes that are coming and how these are going to change. But you'll see here this ad, this doesn't have one headline that's 25 characters that get productivity at the least cost. That's actually, I believe, uh, description line one that they bumped up to. I mean, I know it is. Uh, they bumped it up to the main clickable headline and then the Zoho support, try for free now, that is the description line two. And then the cost effective pricing starts thing, all that others, those are all extra ad extended uh, pieces of content that Google's now adding. And we're gonna talk more about ad extensions towards the end of this module, because I wanna get the basics down for you before we start getting into some more uh, kind of advanced things and options that you can add to your ads. Uh, you'll want to, if it fits in with your model, because these extra things uh, that Google is adding really helps with the click-through rate. And of course, that's why they're doing it. Uh, but anyways, the basic Google AdWords kind of ad format for years has kind of been that, you know, the clickable headline, the green URL, and then we have, you know, two lines of description. So you're kind of limited with how much you can write, you know, for your ad. Um, so you have to make the best use you can of that limited space. Now here are changes that are literally on the way. They're gonna be rolling out. Maybe by the time you actually watch this video lesson, they'll already be out. And if they are, then you'll have to adjust your strategy for these new rules. So the headline is changing from that one 25 character headline. You're now gonna get two 30 character headlines. And depending how they're going to use it for a mobile display or for desktop, it may show in one long line like that previous example that had you know the the, the second description they uh, the first description line they bumped up to make a longer clickable sentence well this will now just be settable by you you'll have a longer clickable sentence but depending on the device it may show as two lines one under the next both blue and clickable or it could be one long line like that previous example the description is changing that it's no longer going to be two 35 character lines you'll have just kind of one long 80 character description. And again, that's gonna be formatted depending on the device that loads the Google results. It may be on one line sometimes, it may be on two, uh, but they are giving us more space. We went from 25 characters to 60 total characters with our headline, which is huge. And we've gone from 70 total characters now to 80 characters for the description. So we're getting a little more space that way. The display URL is pretty much the same, um, I have read some some kind of uh, different opinions on what they're going to do with that as far as if they're going to expand the space or shorten the space uh, for what they'll let people put in the custom URL. URL. But for now, uh, it's pretty much the same. I think it's like 35 characters uh, that you have total for the www everything all the way. And uh, the only change that's been announced so far, and again, Google changes this stuff all the time because they're crazy testers, they're scientists, and whatever will get the highest click-through rates and the best money for them is what they're going to do. Um, but right now what they're doing, the only announced change for this new rollout that they announced this week is that the Google system will now automatically visit the landing page and pull the domain name from that, which will have to be in the display URL and then you can add anything after that. But that's pretty much how it was anyways. But you were just able to type into uh, manually the display URL. But if you didn't match the landing page domain, your ad wouldn't get approved. So this is no major change. It's just kind of automating it. 
So let's talk about how to write high click-through rate ads uh, with Google AdWords. Even with these new rules, it's all the same kind of basic stuff that we want to keep in mind. It's, it's not rocket science. It's, it, you know, it's basics. And you just, the whole key is to test stuff. You want to write a bunch of different ads. And we'll talk about the methodology behind you uh, running a bunch of different ads at the same time with split tests and what I recommend that you do and how you roll all that out. But essentially, here are some things to keep in mind. The number one thing is, don't reinvent the wheel. You've heard me say this again and again and again. The secret to making money online, the secret to having digital marketing success is find out where the money is already flowing, get in front of it too. Sell what's already being sold, market the way things are already being marketed. You'll hear me repeat this over and over and over and over. It's a big mantra I talk about when I, when I used to speak at seminars and conferences, as well as whenever I teach students. I'm a, I almost always include that in any course or teaching or any piece of advice. If you're one of my longtime customers, uh, then you know that. You've heard me say that before. Because it's so true, uh, not to sidebar here, but you know, entrepreneurs, we want to be inventors. You know, we want to, I want to create that thing that no one's ever thought of before. I have this great idea. I don't think anyone's ever done it. Or I want to write this crazy AdWords ad like no one has ever thought of to do this before. Well, that's the hard way to make money. That's the hard way to get positive results. So don't reinvent the wheel. Look and see what's already working and then go from there. Emulate success, as they say. Don't copy it completely, but use it as a starting point. Well, you already know that high click-through rate ads are the name of the game in the AdWords system. That's what's king. I already taught you that, right? Well, if we know that and you look at the number one listed Google AdWords ad for your keyword that you want to advertise for, that ad is getting a high click-through rate or it wouldn't be there. It's got a high quality score. It's got the proper landing page. It's got all the elements that make up as well as a high bid for it to be shown first. Now, even if it has the highest bid but doesn't get a high click-through rate, well, then it wouldn't show number one um, most likely. So typically, if you look at what's number one and even the second displayed ad too, any of them on the first page above the organic listings and below, that gives you a good idea what kind of ad is effective in getting high clicks. It doesn't mean one that you can't create an ad completely different that'll get more clicks, but you're crazy if you don't use that as a starting point. So the question you want to ask when you look at it is, are they using the keyword in the headline? You know, since we're going to be using a strategy of singularity and breaking down our ad groups to basically individual keywords or tightly controlled keyword phrases, we can create ads that match directly to the keyword. And when we use the keyword in the ad, Google rewards us and they bold it, which gets it more attention, which can help the click-through rate. However, with that being said, this is why you have to test with AdWords. You'll notice some competitor ads, they won't be using the keyword you know, in, in the main headline. And they sometimes won't even use it anywhere in the description. They're testing for certain keywords, they find that it wasn't needed to get a higher click-through rate. So that's what you gotta ask yourself first. Are they using the keyword now? They may not be using the keyword in the headline because they're targeting a bunch of different keywords in the same ad group and running that same ad. So they can't have you know the keyword show up uh, in every single ad where it'll be bold and maybe the one you happen to type in and look for, in other words, the one that you're gonna set up an ad group for, Maybe that's in their ad group, that's why it shows, but that's not part of their ad copy. So if the answer is no, if, they aren't, if you don't see the keyword in their headline, what I recommend you do is, as soon as you set up an ad group for that keyword, start a split test. And we're gonna talk more about split testing, but start a split test with one version that's as similar as possible without totally ripping them off to what they have now where they don't use the keyword but basically communicating kind of in the same way and on the same page with the user and then two create another ad to split test that actually does use the keyword in the headline somewhere so usually using the keyword in the headline gets a higher click-through rate but not always so if you run a split test right away you're going to find out if they had found some secret formula and way to communicate with the person searching that keyword phrase where they didn't even need to use the keyword to get a higher click-through rate, or is it maybe because they're running that ad, that same ad, to a bunch of different keywords and that's why it's not in the headline. 
So the headline must relate to their intention. I said it. Step on the other side of the counter. What are they thinking when they're searching for that keyword phrase? You have to figure that out. And then your headline needs to communicate that to them. You know, if they're doing some kind of a search where they're looking for a solution or they have a problem, restate that in the headline. You know, if they're looking for, uh, you know, how to make acne go away, then you can put that in the headline. You know, or do you have problems with acne? You know, if they are looking for, you know, whatever, a hair transplant recommendations or more information about it, then you can put, you know, or are you balding? Da, 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 da. So you, you continue the conversation of whatever their intent may be with what your headline's going to be. So a structure that has been proven to work over the years and still does, it's very good. You'll, you'll see some variations, though, by competitors' ads where they're using something that goes against this formula. But this formula is always a great place to start, and it's proven to work. And most AdWords ads you'll see use this formula. So typically, you have that headline, which tries to incorporate the keyword, continues the conversation with the intent of the search, and then the first part of the description will be a benefit or feature of whatever they're offering in the ad, essentially. So, you know, you're, you're saying something like, you know, cure your baldness fast, start growing your hair back, whatever. All those are, are, are benefits or features of the thing you're offering. So this would be obviously the case if you're offering, you know, some kind of solution for that, whether it's, let's say, let's say you sell some kind of magic cream that they put on their head and it makes their hair grow back. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, you'd probably be a billionaire, but let's say, you know, so if that's it, then the benefit feature just kind of, it restates the benefits of the thing that you're promoting. If you're promoting an opt-in, then whatever the information is going to help them accomplish, you know, so if you're going to, give away a free report, let's say, that teaches them how to, you know, whatever, how to take care of their hair with household products to facilitate regrowth or something, uh, you know, then you, you'd, you'd still state something similar where, you know, learn how to retain your hair and, and, and get it to grow back or, or whatever. And then the bottom line, the second description there, um, is the call to action, which typically relates to, I, I say object, it kind of relates to the thing the ad is about. So if it's building an opt-in, then you state like free video series shows how or something, or get a special, get a special report, yada, 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 download now or instant access. So you always want to use a call to action, you know, related to the thing in that last line. If you're selling a product, you know, then you can say, you know, um, something about specific about the product, you know, it could be like comes in four sizes, shop now or or learn more, you know, things like that when we talked about the the buying the media ads and how those are structured for shopping. So if you are trying to sell something uh, directly, uh, then you want to do that. You can further talk about the actual product in some way, but have a call to action, you know, as far as shop now, learn more, watch a demo, you know, whatever the case is. But if it's a, you know, an opt-in, download report, watch a video now, view white paper, you know, whatever, whatever that is. So I recommend that you, and this is to be tested, but this is kind of AdWords 101 stuff that's been around forever. Uh, if you capitalize the first letter of each word, so if you look at that sentence, first letter of each word like this, you'll see the first letter, the F in first, the L in letter, the O, the E, W, L, and T, they're all capitalized. And if you write, you're, you should write your ads that way, not only your headline, but each line in your description. And when you write your descriptions, it's good to use very short sentence fragments, you know, like try now, view demo, period, you know, you know, that kind of stuff, just like one or two words that have some kind of meaning or power to them. It's not just some run on sentence. You try to think about creating like a micro brochure in 10 words. So that's kind of how you want to write if possible, short little punchy words and fragments. But that's basically uh, the structure. There's so a benefit feature, object, object call to action, and then capitalize the first letter of each word. Now, here's some secrets that I've learned from my own testing. You know, I taught this originally, oh gosh, I want to say it was 
10 years ago when I had done, I've always been like a split testing nerd and, and looking at, at data. And I've often found for most markets, most keywords, that if you use a question mark in your headline, turn it into a question, oftentimes it'll get a higher click-through rate than just a statement. So this, it's still true today. Um, so you definitely want to split test it. Doesn't mean it will always create a higher CTR than another statement. Again, it all depends on what the keyword phrase is and what it is. Um, but oftentimes I find that question marks do very well when uh, people are, are looking to solve a problem or they're looking for a certain solution. Uh, for example, if someone um, types in, you know, cure for male pattern baldness or something like that, you could literally use a headline that says, want to stop your hair loss, question mark. The question mark, because it's a different character than a letter, gets people's attention. But it also gets people's attention because the brain naturally wants to answer questions. So they're drawn to it and their brain turns in a different way than if it was just a statement and not actually a question. And also, you really want to use the word you, Y-O-U, or your, Y-O-U-R. Those are very, very powerful words to use because you're extending the conversation uh, directly to them. Another thing you could do is use quotation marks. Like somewhere in the description, you can put quotes around something like, um, it, it depends, like if somebody made a quote, like a testimonial quote, or you know, one or like two or three words that they said about it, you know, like uh, unbelievable download speed, or if you had software, you know, you could put that in quotes. Quotation marks just give things more life. It's not only draws attention from the eyes, but it, it just, it gives it more life. And, and anywhere you can get attention, of course, um, you, can, uh, you can improve your click-through rate. Now, you don't want to go overboard because Google won't let you, you know, capitalize all the word, letters in a word or do like the first three letters in caps, and then lowercase and uppercase to truly really try to make something ugly looking to get uh, attention. You can't do that, but you can selectively use like a question mark uh, or quotation marks. Use specific numbers and references. This has really been proven to work well in AdWords. If you type in a bunch of different keywords for, um, by the way, if you do a Google search for highest uh, paid keywords or most expensive keywords, that is, you can find tons of blogs that keep up with this stuff. They'll list like the top 50 most expensive keywords. And I think the most expensive ones are like between 40 and $50 a click. It's certain types of, uh, I think, law types of searches, uh, certain types of software as well are very expensive. Uh, it's also uh, certain types of, uh, I think uh, if, you're, if you've been around the internet for long, you remember the old mesothelioma, I think it's called, which is um, a form of, I think it's a form of cancer from uh, asbestos, if I'm not mistaken. Well, there were a lot of lawsuits that were going on for a long time. And so that was one of the top paid Google AdWords pay-per-click keywords that was like 50, 60 bucks a click advertisers were paying because one customer that wanted to sue could be worth, you know, potentially a million dollars or whatever. So those leads were very valuable. But if you do a Google search for most expensive keywords, you'll see an update of like the top 50. Type those keywords in and it's a great way to learn about uh, how to write ads that get high click-through rates because you know those advertisers can't make mistakes paying $30, $40, $50 a click. And of course, trying to get a high enough CTR and quality score that they can pay the lowest amount possible where they can pay like $18 instead of $50 if they do a better job with their ad. So those people have teams that write, you know, probably hundreds of, of ads to split test to raise that CTR to lower their cost because it's so expensive. So that's a good little exercise that you can do. Last but not least, you want to use proof or credibility where possible. Not always. I stick to the benefit feature object CTA structure. But some people, if you have, you know, like legitimately, if you were mentioned in like, you know, on CNN's website or you were mentioned in Forbes magazine, someone did a write-up about you or whatever, then you could put like an as seen in Forbes or, or you know, something along those lines. Or you could put, uh, you know, some other form of credibility. Um, oh, anyways, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm kind of skipped over the last one. So using specific numbers and references is proven. And when you go and uh, look at some of those most expensive keywords, you're going to see this. And it's because it works. 
So saying things like, you know, let's say somebody searches for hydropo hydroponic garden plans. You could have a line that says 17 detailed plans you can copy. The 17 is a specific number, gets their attention. Same thing I kind of mentioned briefly when we were talking in the copywriting module. Specifics is very, very powerful. 221 ways to save on your car insurance. You know, 13 ways to improve your chances of acing a job interview. Just anytime you can put a number in there, but you can also combine number and credibility. If you want to put something like, you know, 2,420 customers in the last seven days, if you wanted to quote customer numbers, obviously you don't want to do anything that's not true or is misleading, but there are a number of ways you can combine credibility with numbers. You know, you could do 2 million, 2 million downloads lifetime. If you were promoting, let's say, uh, an app that had tons of downloads, like you could do something like that. That's a number, but also credibility. But you can use number in specifics for, you know, other things. So if it's like the, you know, kind of the balding solution, you could say six, six household products you need to know or something like that or need to know about if you wanted to extend that. But anywhere you can work numbers into it, it makes it not only the, do numbers get attention because they separate from words in, with kind of the mind's eye and looking at things, but also specific numbers relate to something unique. And uniqueness is what draws someone's interest because otherwise all these ads look the same, 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 you know, trying to sell me an acne cure, trying to give me, you know, tips on how to lower my interest rate on my mortgage, trying to give me life coaching services and saying I need this or this. So by using those, those numbers, it kind of can set you apart and show specifics that they then start uh, kind of associating your ad with your, your thing, your offer, your call to action, because you have that unique number that other people don't. So those are some tips you can use. What it all comes down to is literally, one, observing your competitors. Even if you're ter a terrible writer and you're just you're even terrible at copywriting and, and coming up with benefits and features of those things, if you literally took the you know four pages of the key you know take four Google results pages and you know if you were to write down or copy and paste all the Google AdWords ads from the top four or five pages, and you were to literally throw them in a piece of software that jumbled up all the words and made a random ad using all of the different competitors ads, of course, not using their trademarks or company names, but just jumbled all the other words together. And then you kind of cleaned it up. So it made sense. You'd probably have a high performing ad. So the first thing is really to look at competitors ads. Uh, but the key to all this and to getting that higher CTR, which is the magic uh, part of this whole process to get more um, exposure for your ads and to lower your click costs, to get that high CTR, you have to test. And we're going to talk about split testing ads. It's critical. You, no matter, I mentioned this before, you can't fall in love with an ad that you write. It's, the data decides. So you will write a whole bunch of ads, throw them in the system. They'll all be kind of rotating around Robin. You'll see the data and then you'll make a decision on which one was the best. You'll get rid of the others once you have the confidence data when you've let it run long enough. And then you can uh, create a new uh, ad to test against that new control and go from there. But more than anything, look at the competitors because they're already putting in tons and tons of work to find these ads that get the high CTRs.